The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. What's up, bees? Hello. Welcome to the Brit on Blast podcast, where we put everything and anything on blast. That is my first time doing that without the notes in front of me. I'm pretty proud of myself that I remembered that tagline. We we should remember it. This is our 32nd episode. 32nd episode. So there's that. Um, I'm but not going to say we're that sharp because it took us 32 <laughs> times to get a little tagline <laughs> down. But here we are. Here we are. Um What's this week's roundup, Britton? So this week we are kind of breaking down um, the halftime documentary about Jennifer Lopez. This was all your idea, and um, I'm really stoked that you came up with it and kind of wrote this outline for us because it's really inspiring and great, and I'm just excited to just dive into it. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it, but we're just going to talk about Jennifer Lopez and how pretty much amazing she is and how she has really persisted and overcome all the odds. I mean, and that's really the biggest takeaway from this. I Jennifer Lopez has always been a um, huge role model to me ever since she came out with Selena. I remember watching her at a very young age. That movie made me hysterical when she... Selena got shot. Oh I was God. not well because yeah. it was like, who could do this to their friend? Or like it was the head of the fan club, but they were right. like friends or whatever. She right. was like trying to bring her into her crew anyway. And JLo did such an incredible performance in that. And then, you know, when she released Jenny from the block and all of that, like I felt that so much in my soul because at that time I had just moved up to Tahoe and I was from San Diego. And so I was like, I'm still Jenny from the block. And I was like, not from any blocks. So. <laughs> Definitely well, not the Bronx, but right. incline the Bronx either way. Incline the block Bronx. No, Well, I was from San Diego. Gotcha. And so then I was like in incline and it felt like I came from the Bronx when in reality, like I did not. <laughs> it was just Carlsbad. Turns out La Jolla is not the Bronx, Brit. It's, it's not the Bronx at all. That is beside the point. But it was like, you know, you are still where you came from. Like mm-hmm. you're not, nothing has changed just because you've gone to a new place or anything like that and again like i think she's one of the main like look we can look at all of the people that you and i grew up with as yes. um pop icons so yes. we had like britney spears christina aguilera beyonce all pretty much all of destiny's child but mostly beyonce the spice yeah. girls right and i'm not gonna lie like even within like disney princesses like there wasn't a lot of and it's not and i'm in no way shape or form like i don't really identify with any of the cultures that are within my bloodline because they're so diluted at this point that I don't really feel that I can. It doesn't feel right to me. But I mean, I was like dark haired, light eyed, dark skinned half of the year. Like it was never, and I never really had a, when I was watching shows, it was like the brunette was always the villain in Mm -hmm. some way, shape or form. There was Belle, but like, she seemed like she did not have it sorted out. Like, why would you date a beast? (laughs) Like that's get it together. Other than the book reading, like she did not have it sorted. Right. And then everybody else was like blonde haired, blue eyed. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. So it was really like interesting for me. So then when Jennifer Lopez came out, I was like, she looks, she didn't look like me, but it was the closest thing that I could get. Right. Um, and so, And then just what she spoke about, like working hard. And those were all the same values that I grew up with. And like not forgetting where you came from and taking care of your family, like that kind of stuff was valuable. She's pretty incredible. Like of all the people that you've listed, obviously a lot of them have gone on to have these amazing careers and be extremely successful. But Jennifer Lopez has proven over time to just continue to create this empire and continue to crush it. Um, And like in the documentary, she definitely dives into like all of kind of it's kind of like a timeline of her life a little bit and it's so relatable on so many levels and i mean i think one of the biggest things that we're going to talk about is how we didn't know all these things about her Mm -hmm. and how we kind of judged her and thought things were different in her life or maybe it came easy right well and we've all had a lot of things to say about her relationships and meanwhile she was like 
you can say all you want. I'm going to keep working. So right. that brings us to the topic for this week, which is persistence against all odds. Mm-hmm. So we will dive further into that. But um, before we jump into that, you just got off of two weeks on rodeo status. How oh are you doing? Gosh. Are you alive? Tell I, me about it. Yeah. So it has been um, probably one of the busiest months, I would say, of my life um, mm-hmm. as far as just working and grinding um, very rewarding and very successful. Um, and I'm so beyond grateful for that, but, um, I am definitely due for a little break. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, this topic is perfect because while we've had so much success, um, I definitely had to persist through a lot of obstacles and a lot of things that weren't expected. Um, and so, you know, I think just like we were talking about, sometimes you don't have the luxury to take time for yourself and to like get in your feelings and do the things that you need to do because you are, I mean, I was busy working. There was no other person that was going to, you know, drive this forward. And while I do have the most amazing team and I want to touch on that for sure, because there's no way I could do it without them. Yeah. Um, but like when you're, when it's your business, it's different. It does. And I mean, I really do have the, I, my sister is you're blessed. so incredible and not only that she's incredibly talented and I mean that girl can sell I, literally anything. anything she's so amazing and she's so I mean amazing to look at and she's just so dynamic mm-hmm. people love her drawn to her and to have her like by my side representing our family brand like I can literally not think of a better situation and so it's not even about me at this point, but I'm very tired. I'm very, I'm just like spent, but I'm happy to be here with you and to kind of recap on everything. Um, and just, like I said, just so unbelievably grateful for the support that came out. Like I'm still digesting it. Yeah. I mean, it's Monday we're recording on Monday. And so I haven't even taken the time to like truly understand what just happened, Mm -hmm. but It's good. It's big. And um, I feel like we really have ourselves a brand here. So I'm really excited for the future. You really do. I mean, I knew you had a brand, I think, before you knew you had a brand, probably, because it's always harder to see when you're like in it. But and I love branding. So I was literally like, this girl has crushed it. Like, she's got it. When I saw that first photo shoot that you did with Jerry, I was like, this is going to be it. Like, she's going to do great things with this. And like, there's so many different areas you can expand from product Yes. So you can categories that you can go into not saying that's very long. But when you look at like the lifespan of a company, you have to like really look at where can you expand? Where can you shift? What can you do? And is the brand itself so strong that you can really um, use that as an anchor and as a foundation to grow into all of those different areas? Because as we've seen in um, the last I mean, in life, I think and we'll talk about that today is like, you're gonna have to pivot. Like, you're always going to have to pivot. You have an amazing brand now. And, you know, years down the line, you're going to have to pivot again. And that's for sure. It's persisting. Persisting. Yeah. But you have the foundation of such a strong brand and such a incredible team and like a community that backs you. And I think that's solid. And man, there's nothing like family values. I mean, Haven and Flux is built off of family foundation. Like, for sure. It's important. So it is. It's and it's. I mean, in the doc, Jennifer Lopez talks about being true to yourself and like what makes you you. Well, family is like what makes me me. Yep. So it makes sense that our brand is built around that. But Mm -hmm. how are you? Tell me about. (laughs) I'm sorry. Are are we as unwell? (laughs) Yeah, we are unwell. We're equally as unwell. Yeah, I just got off of like a week in Dallas um, doing a for a trade show, but I did it different than I've ever done it before. So we did a showroom, which was a little bit hard for me as a salesperson because I'm a salesperson. So, Mm -hmm. and I, I, like, I don't mean to like, like you have brag, but I have a lot of experience and I'm one of the best salespeople I've ever met. And like, not to, and again, like not to be met yourself. I've met myself. (laughs) I've I've looked myself in the face. You are an incredible salesperson and that it's something that's not easy. And you can tell when someone's not natural at it and you're very natural. Yeah. And I have a hard time, like to me sales. And I think that this is what like separates my type of sales from other people's types of sales. And like, you hear a lot of people be like, oh, salespeople are like sleazy, whatever. And that can be very true. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that take advantage and in order to make a buck. And I don't think that's the way to do it. In my opinion, 
you need to provide a service. And so it's really hard for me because, and I'm very passionate about small business as we know. And so working with small retailers, you know, they, the, one of the reasons I love doing what I do is because I know that when they purchase a candle and when they sell a candle, they're making about 20 bucks on the candle. It's a little bit less than that. But so for every candle they purchase, when I hear my clients are selling through, that is like the joy of my life because I know they've made a couple hundred to a thousand dollars off of one order in one month. And that's like really important to know that you're affecting somebody's bottom line just as much as they're affecting yours, which is why I'm not super passionate about big box retailers. So going into this, it was hard because I was like, the first like four days and I remember texting you and being like, I'm just not well, like I'm having so much anxiety because, you know, I wasn't sure how to interact with the sales team. Like they're not really my sales team. So how do you, and it's 12 and I've managed 14 salespeople. And if we had gone into that from like, and it was me to manage it, I would have asked a hundred million times, like, what is, what's your appointments look like? Like how many appointments do you have booked? Like, who are you bringing in? Like, are they gift? Are they accessory? Like, how are we servicing them when they get there? Who do I, like, who do I need to be at the appointment with? I mean, the owner of the brand is standing there. It's important to like get them there. Anytime you have that opportunity, you're always going to increase sales. And then everybody, you know, they get a percentage. I get a percentage. The small business gets a percentage. Everybody's making a lot of money and Mm -hmm. really like, helping the economy honestly and you so, just have like standards i have standards you live by and they have your standards and your expectations have been so successful for you in the past and so yeah. when you almost release that it's just like yeah and I, i'm gonna be honest like i don't know that it's i don't know that i'm mentally ready to release the sales side of my business then you shouldn't you know yeah because it just if it doesn't feel right you, and yeah. if you're having all this friction around it then it's not right right So we're hiring, I hired, um, I also am hiring. (laughs) Yes, it's so exciting. I know, I'm super excited. I have a team now. A solid ass team. And um, you guys will hear about her, but um, Lauren Benson is going to be coming in to work for Haven and Flux. So I'm really, really exciting. She's going to be the marketing coordinator, which is exciting because it's an area that I know I can help her grow in and like teach her. And I think we're going to make a great team. And I think she's got like our personalities are very different. So I think that's going to help us. We're already working great together. Right. She called me the other day and she was like, so what you did was a little cringe. And I was (laughs) like, thank you for calling me on that. And like, because what I did as I was doing, I was like, this feels a little cringe, but I did it anyway. That's great. So like you need that sounding board, you know, in business and life and everything. Right. So it's just, it's helpful. So she starts in two weeks. And so I think by freeing that some of that time up, then I can, nobody's going to sell this brand better than me. No, exactly. And you know that. And it's genuine when it's coming from you. Mm. And so, yeah. Anyways, Lauren's going to help you persist. And yep. we're going to talk about doing that. Oh, yeah. Because no, none of us are going anywhere. It's just a new, it was just a learning experience. Every- There's no losses to me. And that was a big thing. And I want to be really clear about this. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is just learnings. I learned I would like for a moment, I was like, this is a fail. Like, I wish that I would have done it differently. I didn't feel my, I wanted my brand representation to be stronger in that showroom. I would have paid whatever it took to do that. And so I was very frustrated. That was my biggest frustration. And coming off of that, I'm like, great learning. I probably could have communicated better. I probably needed to pick up the phone and have a conversation with the person setting it up to understand what our limitations were and what they were not. So, um, so Every no. failure is just a stepping stone that gets you to your goal faster yep. and makes you better. Yep. So, so you know that's behind you. Not That's not going to happen again. Right. No. no, no, no and no. so. Yeah, yeah. So, but all good stuff. I mean, all good stuff. Really happy to be here with you today. Yes. Same. Should we jump into the rest of this persistence? Let's do it. Okay. So Britt, because this is in your wheelhouse, why the Automobile Museum? I mean, you know, for me, it's about the cars all day long. I love cars. I like old cars, new cars, all the things. For me, the fact that they have the DeLorean here and the Batmobile in the same room is like, it's, it's like, a, it's ha- it makes my heart happy. Um, so that's why for me, but I think for like someone like us, like doing things with all of our friends, like yeah, 160 the of our close friends yes. could go to the theater. In any movie that you want, they have so many things to offer. The space camp for your kids, if you want, like need a little break yeah. or you want to look at the cars, 
Reno's just really lucky to have it. It's one of the biggest collections, I think, in the country, yeah. which is awesome. It's so cool. And the fact that it's here in the biggest little city is like the coolest thing ever. So yeah, grab a bottle of tequila yeah. and come on into the theater. <laughs> yes, back to the future. Get all your friends, 160 of them. So the whole town of Reno. So everyone you know. <laughs> and watch a movie. Yep. You can find tickets at the uh, um, automuseum.org. Yeah. And yeah, that's where, that's where you go get your tickets. Perfect. Fun day. Britain, tell us what BLFT is all about because you know it's my favorite place to shop. The Biggest Little Fashion Truck is a family-owned and operated boutique on wheels. We got started five years ago because I had this deep desire to make women feel more confident. And I found out that one of the many ways you can enhance your confidence was through clothing. Hence our why, confidence through clothing. We love some confidence in our lives. We pride ourselves in bringing back that old school expertise in customer service by providing an experience, whether it be at our pop-up events around town. We love the pop-up events. I'm at those with her all the time and they are fire. Or we have a storefront, the Babe Cave. We just want each and every babe to feel better and be ready to be seen after shopping with us. Shop us online at the Babe Cave or our pop-up events at local businesses around town. We can't wait to see you. And a little something special we have for you. Use promo code BOB20 for 20% off your purchase online. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be shopping today. So, of course, we're going to give you guys a definition. And the definition of persistence is firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Yeah. So I think that, you know, this kind of brings us back to all of the um, all of the female idols that we had growing up. Right. I talked about that a little bit in the intro. You talk about like Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, the Spice Girls, Beyonce, Destiny's Child, Christina Aguilera. Mariah Carey, Jennifer Lopez. And then like a little bit later into our lives, we had Taylor Swift, right? Right. And when you look at the group of those women who had, and like what it, and you know, I think it's important to say like, what does it take to be persistent in a career where you are a public figure and you are, you have a million eyes on you, you have people stalking you, you have people hating, to have people hate you on that level is a lot. And everybody has an opinion. You're totally entitled. I'm sure not. I know everybody doesn't like me so much. And like, that's fine. Yeah. In your developmental years, when you don't really like later in life, you, you know, become more confident and you know who you are and you know what your values are. But when you're developing and when you're young, Mm -hmm. it's so much harder to have those. And so when you're in a pub in the public eye, it has to be that much harder. So I think this is such a great opportunity, actually, and I'm like making this connection as we're sitting here to talk about mental health because my little brother was a really famous um, electronic like EDM music producer. He started getting really fa- He taught himself everything that he knows from scratch, Tin Cup, people, a lot of, and to this day, like I was on the, a boat yesterday and a guy comes on the boat. I've never met this guy in my life. And he goes, yeah, I know who Tin Cup is. And we were talking about mental health and the guy was like, yeah, my cousin has not this blah, blah, blah. So we're like connecting over that. And he's like, wait, you're talking about tin cup. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, whoa, everything makes a hell of a lot more sense. And what happened with my brother is that my brother had anxiety at a very young age. There's no doubt in my mind. And as he um, started to develop, his music was his outlet. Right. But he was also self-medicating. So he was self-medicating, started with weed and then the weed wasn't enough. So he moved on to other things. And, you know, and this happens a lot in the mental health space, especially like when there was no, to be clear, we didn't know what anxiety was. Like it wasn't a word that we used. This was like in 2003, like Mm -hmm. we didn't in 1999, like we didn't, their anxiety and depression weren't words. So this is at the same time that all of these women are in the spotlight and being told that they're like too sexual, all of these different things. My brother, mind you, he's going through a similar experience as a man. He's now famous. He's booking all of these shows. He's traveling. And I had never experienced the level like and my mom and I were talking about this yesterday. My brother would be like, they're following me. And we didn't know if he like it was very logical that somebody would be following him Mm -hmm. because he was getting like I was getting attacked on Instagram from his female fans because they thought I was his girlfriend. So he's like this famous 
like figure he's being fed drugs and alcohol right at 18 trying to like make the most of his talents and make money at it right and capitalize on that and at such an impressionable time like we're talking about with these you know stars Mm -hmm. and you're but like you're so impressionable that when people tell you something you're gonna believe it Mm -hmm. and because you have no experience to prove otherwise yep so you're not there to like make your own decisions that would be so hard and then obviously struggling with mental health Yep. I mean, I'm sure that all of these women that we just listed are going to have anxiety or some form. I mean, Selena Gomez comes out and talks about it publicly right. all the time, which I I think when these women that we're talking about were going through it, it wasn't something that was talked about. No, it and, wasn't at all. And, and then, your brother, too. And the same with my brother. Yeah. It wasn't talked about until recently. And so, you know, they're self-medicating. They're trying to figure out, like, why am I having And with my brother? He's like, he can't tell if his voices are real or his voices are not real. Like, he was getting, like, downloads from, like, famous people. And we were like, it would make sense. He's in L.A. Like, he could totally be having... He's at one of the greatest, like musical schools like they I don't even know what it's called but like he was in school at like one of the best schools it's like he could definitely be making those connections like we don't know he's right. playing at all these like huge huge vent I can't talk you guys sorry no he's yeah, like he's playing like, at a huge venue he's a big deal he has a lot of attention a lot of pressure mm-hmm. and it's just so hard to not develop some type of mental illness when you're having that much pressure and and Honestly, I feel like athletes can feel that same, have the same thing like that, that pressure to perform and that pressure to deliver. And then the bigger you get, the more people depend on you Mm -hmm. and the more pressure there that you have and the more under the microscope that you become. And so it's like, while that seems to be the goal, the success and the money and, you know, having more agents and having more support around you. At the same time, your mental health could be declining while everyone else says it's, you know, as while it's everyone else sees it improving. Well, it's the ego and like a lot of people. So for Mark, for a while, it was like, well, it makes sense that he would have this ego because he's like coming up so fast and doing so well. Oh, your brother. My brother, Marcus. Yeah. Sorry. Um, You know, he's like growing up and like doing things so well and like it's all going so well for him. And meanwhile, I'm going to his shows, I'm backstage and women are throwing like they're naked in the front row and throwing pills at him. And it's like for a young man, I think he was like, God, 20 Wow. when that was happening. And like men develop a lot later than women. And so like the mental. So then you look at these guys like Christina Aguilera, like imagine what was happening backstage. Mm -hmm. And then women are so impressionable of like we and especially growing up like I mean, I think you and I were lucky because we had strong male figures around us, but it was like, who were like, you can do anything like you got that. Or for the most part, my dad was right. like, if you work hard, like you can do what I do, like right. just work hard. Right. And if you don't have that support and you're alone on the road and people yeah. are throwing drugs and alcohol at you. Right. And, and it's not like they, you know, these are one of a kind people. It's not like they're on a team where there's like a cohort of people around them that they can look at and say, okay, we're going through this. We're, you know, doing the same thing. Like at least Mm -hmm. in our sports, we had our teammates around us that were kind of like a balancing act Mm -hmm. and we can kind of stay on the, if you were to get off the path, you could get back on because your 12 teammates were going in that direction. Right. So it's just hard when you're like one of a kind superstar like this. Yeah. Or like your brother, like you're saying, but, um, out of all of them, J Lo has kind of. Yeah. I mean, she's fifty, as we Crazy. saw. It's which is insane. But, um, and I'm gonna be completely honest. I I didn't know her story. I mean, I've always mm-hmm. been a fan of J Lo. It's like you can't. No one doesn't like her, but she's so incredibly talented. And while everyone told her that she wasn't or tried to fit her into like a hole of just being a dancer or just being a singer, she believed in herself and she overcame so many obstacles in front of Mm -hmm. her. And when I think of like persistence in my brain, because I'm like, I'm a very visual person and I like see things in color. And and so when I think of persistence, I think of like like a road with a shit ton of mountains and Mm -hmm. you just have to continue to go over the mountains and continue to get to that end point, whatever that end point is. Sometimes you don't even know what the end point Mm -hmm. is, but you just know you're on this journey to get there. And J-Lo had so much that she overcame she just kept waking up and kept believing in herself and kept staying true to who she was and i think she kept the right people around her too i think at one point she 
And like, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert. So I think with Jennifer, um, we're on a first name. Me and Jennifer are on a first name basis. No, yeah. So, no. With Jen. <laughs> Me and Jen. Jen. Me. Um, so with her, like, I think she is, she talked about, you know, what we don't acknowledge about, and I, this was glaringly apparent to me when mm-hmm. they showed and this is a spoiler alert so if you haven't watched it stop now go watch it come back to this um or just let us ruin it for you but there's a point where you know she's being nominated for all of these major um awards for like oscars grammys well not Grammys, sorry grammys i believe she has won some but within the actor space it was oscars and golden globes mm-hmm and she's being nominated for Hustlers, which I thought was an incredible movie. My mom was like terrified by that movie, which I can understand because my mom is like of an older, more like conservative generation. And for me, it was really empowering. It was really empowering to see Jennifer Lopez on the Super Bowl on a football field. Like I cannot express that enough. That was, I had just gotten divorced. My divorce had just been finalized. I was turning 30. It was a hundredth Super Bowl. And I'm there, all of my friends flew in from San Diego. We're sitting there and we're watching the Super Bowl, the 100th Super Bowl, and Jennifer Lopez is on the stage pole dancing and then bringing her daughter out on stage. And like it was such a strong like female presence Mm -hmm. on a football field that made me feel like I was so empowered after watching that. I was also very drunk. But (laughs) yes, no, I I'm totally with you. It was just like such a a defining moment for women when right. we watched that. But like what you were saying that I was like holding on to is like, she was getting nominated for all these things. She yeah. was achieving massive success in crossing barriers that people hadn't done before as far as singing, acting. Right. And what were people talking about? Of course, the media was just talking about her relationships yeah. and gaslighting things that just simply don't matter. And there's a part in the show, and thank you for bringing me back to that because I was getting real carried away, but like there's a part in the show where she is, they show all of, and she, this is the thing about Jennifer Lopez. She doesn't hit anybody over the head with anything. And I appreciate that about her. So they're showing like all of the nominations for Golden Globes. And I did not realize until that second Every single one of those um, nomination uh, nominees were blonde haired, blue eyed girls. And it's Jennifer Lopez being nominated for Hustlers and all of these blonde haired, blue eyed girls. And I don't have I mean, you're one of my best friends. I have nothing against blonde haired, blue eyed girls. I'm all for it. I got brown eyes. Okay, great. So, but my, the point being is that like, this is not again, like, I'm not trying to like separate no, no, the no. thing, but the glaring thing to me was like, she lost to it, like it was so clear. It was like, oh God. And you needed two Latinas to make up for one person on a stage for the Super Bowl to connect all of my brain because it is a little fuzzy. You needed two Latinas to make up for one like right. normal, what is it? Like the person, the headliner is in the history of the Super Bowl has only been one, one person, person and you needed two Latinas to make up for one. And then she gets nominated for all this stuff and she's like getting turned down for something that was that was hustlers was one of the best films i've ever watched and it was all females so brit why intentional candles for mental health because building healthy habits around your intentions can have a positive impact on not only your mental health but your overall productivity i wanted to create a premium non-toxic candle that reminded my customers that life is complex and we can live in the and space Talking about mental health and mental illness doesn't always have to be scary or depressing. Uh, Sometimes it can be fun and enlightening. We are wildly unique and expansive creatures as we've talked about on the podcast before. And we can be many things in a day. And sometimes we just need to light a candle to remind ourselves who the fuck we are and what we are capable of. I 100% agree with that. Plus your candles smell so good and they fill up my whole house. I hear you have something special for our listeners. I do. I have a little promo for our bees. Y'all can head to havenandflux.com and use code BOB20 at checkout to get 20% off your order. I hope y'all enjoy. She's insane. Like just how much she does. And like we, like we were saying, she's accomplishing all of these things that no one has ever done before. Yeah. And 
then the media is just talking about her relationships and like that's what's on the cover of magazines is who she's dating and they called her i mean and they they did this to taylor swift too where instead of focusing on the art and the talent of these amazing individuals they focus on their relationship life and it's like they don't do that to men that song and the so Man by taylor swift is like my one of my favorite songs of all time. right it's like how far along would these incredibly talented females be if they were men well for starters, they wouldn't be focusing on things that didn't matter that weren't true to their art or their mm-hmm. talents. And so, and Jennifer talks about it in in the doc and she um, doesn't let it bother her. So, in fact, she... So when she walks off the... St- so when in the documentary too, like, and just to wrap up my last thought is like, and this is where you're going with this, I know, because we have the same brain. She stepped off of that Grammy nomination and she looked like she was going to cry. She didn't which I've been in that position Mm -hmm. a million times. She held her shit together Mm -hmm. and she goes and she checks on her team who who have been with her for 20 plus years. And she's standing there as like the pillar. She is the CEO of that, of Mm -hmm. her brand and her business. She is the CEO. She does not like all of the relationship bullshit, all of the other shit. She doesn't care. She, she goes and she feed it. On, yeah, she, she on pours her into things that are going to help advance her. She pours into the people that are going to help advance her. And she doesn't feed the attention towards things that are just not beneficial to moving her career forward. Yep. So it's, I mean, it's very relatable. I think that you. I learned so much just by watching her mm-hmm. because, and by relatable, I've never won a Grammy. I'm never going to win. Right. I'm, I'm not even on her level in any aspect of life. It's just like seeing someone with that amount of pressure be able to do it makes me think I can do it too. Yeah. And her ability to persist, right? Right. Is what has gotten her to this level that she's at now and all the accomplishments that she has. And she doesn't let the negativity and the drama and the things get to her. And maybe that's the difference between her and someone else in her position. I think that's the difference between her and all of the, you know, she's sober. She doesn't drink. I don't know right. if she smokes weed or anything. I hope she does for my sake. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, you look at her and it's like, she has always put her health first, mm-hmm. relatable. Like I'm trying to put my health first and mm-hmm. she's put her family first. Mm-hmm. She's put her community first mm-hmm. and she's put the people that her team first. And I think that, we talk about that a lot. And that's why I was so, um, I literally texted Britain. I was like, Britain and, um, and our producer Christian that, and I was like, yo, we have got to talk about this. Like, I don't mean to be so forward, but we have got to have a conversation about this because it's what we talk about all the time. And, mm-hmm. and, and we are by no means are like on even close to that level at all. But like being a small business owner in a small community can be really overwhelming sometimes because you don't want to slip up. You don't want to make a mistake. I would say that like for me, even having a social media account where I have like, you know, not that many followers, honestly, a thousand followers on my personal is not that much, but that amount of followers, they have an opinion. Like we've talked about like people being offended by my legs and it's like, and it's and I love the face that Britain makes every single well, time I like, say that. Don't it's stupid. That. Who, yeah, and it, you can, but you can't. And like you don't have. And that's the thing. And that's the point that I've been learning. And then to watch that is like just stay silent. Mm-hmm. Just stay silent. Keep going. And it's hard, obviously, because we have a platform here, and like we want to share these things with you guys so that you can go off and like be better than us. I yeah. I think that it goes back to you know, feeding and directing your attention towards things that are going to move you forward. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hard to define, especially on, you know, when we have Instagram and we want to share because sharing helps build that connection to your followers and the people who shop with you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to draw the line and just like not, there's going to be haters. There's going to be people that, you know, come after you and that aren't going to like you or agree with you. And that's fine. You just have to feed the people that do right. feed the things, what your customers do want. And I think that the one thing that was another th- theme across the doc for me was, um, her ability to stay true to herself. Yes. And while that changes, and mm-hmm. I, I think that that is changing for me, I'm feeling that so hardcore right now. My idea one of she Jennifer said this, her idea of success is ever evolving. It's always changing. And 
I think that I'm going through that so much because what I thought was going to be my idea successful five years ago is completely different as I sit here today and hers, hers as well. Like she said, you know, when she first started her career, she was this dancer, this singer. And then when she did the Super Bowl, they were like, we want the Jenny from the block. And she's like, I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a, you know, represent people are listening. What do I want to say? Mm-hmm. Like, and she, her idea of success is it wasn't the same as it was at the beginning of her career. And I think that's something that we can all kind of take um, a little slice of her advice because we're always changing all of us as you should if you're not evolving and changing in life then what are you doing like right. then you're staying the same and if you're staying the same then you're not having any progress and then you know i think that we look at change it's so scary for everybody but change is evolution and we've We wouldn't have the iPhone if it wasn't for evolution. So like we wouldn't have Amazon, like all the conveniences that we have and all of these trailblazers in business and in media that are willing to stand up and be the leaders and take charge and lead us into, you know, progression, basically. Yeah, you right. And it's like being in touch with yourself as you go through these changes allows you to then come up with what success means to you. And it's the self-awareness, I think, too, because it's easy to get your head like all up in it. Mm -hmm. And so I think like being able to not get carried away in your brain about it, that's what self-awareness is what keeps you from being cocky or keeps you from being narcissistic about things. Like self-awareness is like checking yourself. If somebody, like for me, every time I get a call out about like me being whatever, like my outfit, my outfit that I wore to the rodeo upset my dad. Like on a, like on a visceral level, my dad was like upset with my outfit. My mom was upset with my outfit. And I'm like, and the con the, the comment was that I was too old to be dressing the way that I was dressing. And I was like in a cute little bandana top and cut off shorts and my boots and, uh, and a Murdoch hat. And (laughs) as we should be. And, um, you know, how do you take those comments and set them aside and say, you know what, this is who I am. I'm might be 32, but I also own my sexuality. My body's still good while it's still good. And you know what? Fuck it. If Jennifer Lopez can rock that sequin outfit at 50 on a pole. Well, it's just, she knows who she is and she's proud of who she is and she's not going to change because someone doesn't agree with her. And that's something that, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can go all day don't, on this. Yeah, don't let... Oh, I don't... Like, and this is not a moment to be like, nobody needs to... Like, I'm good. Like, and that's the difference though, right? Is it like... Okay, so let's get into some takeaways because I think this is a great segue. Do you have anything else on the actual... Or do you want to do the learnings? No, no, let's do the takeaways. Okay. Start it. So coming off of that, like, your sexuality can be powerful. Mm-hmm. So I remember, you know, my... As much as my dad is like, dress like a nun. My dad also growing up was like, you know, if you're going, if people are going to take advantage of you for your looks, then you can use your looks to take advantage of any situation. And that always stuck with me because, you know, that's true as women, if, if we are going to be like, and let's be clear, I've totally gaped at men before. So let's, I would, I'm, I've never said inap- yeah. any inappropriate things, but like, right. I've definitely like checked some guys out, totally. but like, So like if, but if people are going to make comments and take advantage of you because of the way that you look, Mm -hmm. then go ahead and use that against them to gain the advantage because my looks have also gotten me a lot of places that they've unlocked a lot of doors that like, and I don't take that for granted. No, I think it just, I, I understand what you're saying. Like your sexuality can be powerful. I've never really like, I didn't, I was definitely a tomboy growing up and I never really, you know identified as being that like that like how you have I think maybe well I didn't get a choice you were like striking yeah exactly but I think that for me when I feel my most confident is when I and when I'm doing my best work is when I feel like I look good Mm -hmm. and I always even when I was playing I would always say look good play good and I think that it's just feeling good about who you are and if that is to other people, maybe they take that as being sexy. Like, that's fine. If that's making you feel confident, if that's making you do your job better or your purpose in life better, then do that. For me, getting dressed up and going and selling hats makes me more confident. Right. So as it should. That's that's what I'm going to do. And there's nothing like... 
you get to define that. And I just don't need, yeah, and I, I'm not going to apologize for that. I don't care if people think I'm too old to right. do that. I'm just going to go ahead and be my best version of myself because in turn, that will allow me to be confident through my sales and at the end of the day, will get me to what I believe is successful. Absolutely. And that was a big thing that I've struggled with because, you know, as when I was younger, my looks have always been an issue. Like, and I, and I, and I view them as an issue, even the way that I talk about them is an issue because I don't like to talk about them. I don't like to acknowledge them because growing up, I was smart. I wanted people to look at me for being smart. I was smart in a different way, but I didn't get like, I was put into modeling school and like, I was told I was gonna, and that's a lot of pressure because then it's like, okay, I'm supposed to eat a certain way. I remember at a certain point I got to an age where people would approach me in the store and they would be like, oh my God, you're so tall. You're so pretty. You could be a model. And I would, and I hate that to be clear. Like it makes it like, I'm ha like, it makes my heart rate. But spike. it almost makes it feel like it's part of your identity when everyone's telling you that, right? Like it's what I was supposed to do. Like the only purpose for me to be on this earth is to go be a model. So at a certain point I would look people dead in the eyes and I'd be like, yeah, well, I like to eat too much for that because it's just like, I want you to be clear that like, also I got turned down for a lot of jobs because I was like heavier than I was supposed to be. And I've never been heavy. Like I'm not, uh, I mean, I've been like, I've gained weight and I've lost weight, but like I should have never been considered heavy in my life. Like I would have been considered a plus. Size. So then I got hips and then I would have been considered a plus size model. And we, for the people who have met me, so you go through that, you look at models too, right? Like, and they go through that experience. And I was just like, I will not put up with this. I want to be an athlete. Well, yeah, you didn't allow someone to put you into like, and the same thing with Jennifer there, she was like, I grew up and like my sister was a smart one and my other sister was a singer and I was a dancer. And she didn't, she was like, I, she was an amazing dancer, but she didn't allow that to like what people said to be the only thing that she did. And you were like, everyone told you you're a model, but you didn't allow that to be the only thing that you did. And like, I think that it's not letting someone put you in a hole and label you and then making you stay there. Instead, believing in yourself, knowing what you yeah. want to do inside. What is, and I feel this to my core because, I mean, when you have to reinvent yourself in different areas of life, yeah. it takes a lot of confidence and you have to stay true. All right, so you guys know that I live for Western wear, specifically my boots and my hat. So I wanna talk a little bit about a brand new brand that is new to Reno, Nevada, and is from our beautiful babe over here. So Britton, tell us what Murdoch's is. Well, first of all, hats have been one of my truest loves since I was a kid. I swear I had a hat on in every single picture as a child. And then they quickly became a BLFT signature. We couldn't find the hat that was just perfect. And so we decided to design our own. Murdoch's is a family brand that started in the great state of Nevada in the 1950s. My great grandparents started Murdoch's Western wear. Fast forward 60 years, the Murdoch sisters recreate this homegrown brand by curating a hat line that embodies the spirit of Nevada. We were raised in this amazing state and we watch a Nevadan's ability to put in a hard day's work on the ranch followed by a hard night's play at the casinos. We pulled inspiration from the everyday beauty around us, the sunsets, Lake Tahoe, the mountains, and the forests. I'm not gonna lie, I have full body chills right now because you hit so many nails on the head just now. Like there's nothing that screams Reno, Nevada more than family and community and a little bit of Western. So the fact that you put all of our favorite things together and then you made it all about like bringing back the roots of your family brings me so much joy. Y'all need to check out Murdoch's Hats. Where do you find them? Murdoch'sHatsAndApparel.com. We love it. Go shop, y'all. I'm just thinking like, as we're having this conversation, I'm like, this is such a strong conversation to have right now because for both of us, yeah, it's about persistence, but at the same time, it's multifaceted. We are multifaceted human beings. Mm -hmm. Like who have all of these different things. So I just took that um, photo. Like I haven't wanted to model like since high school because I'm very uncomfortable with it. And MD is like, you're going to do some photo shoots for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't really don't want to. I wouldn't. So he roped me in because of the Jeep. And I was like, I'll do it for the Jeep. Like the Jeep deserves her moment. So just so, for the listeners, you're going to oh, yeah. be in a photo shoot um, with your car and MD shooting it. Yeah, and MD okay. shooting it. And so, um, but then I... 
I didn't want to be identified as that. So because I'm a business owner and then also I have a podcast with you. Right. And also like I like I mean, you can do a little of everything. But that's the point. Yeah, that's the point. Jennifer Lopez in the beginning of this thing was like, I am a dancer. I'm a singer and I'm an actress and I will not let you tell me anything different. I'm going to I see and back to your point in the beginning. I see the end of the road. Mm -hmm. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I know what my goals are. I'm going to reach those goals. Whatever gets in my way is not going to stop me. It's going to slow me. Maybe it's like a really big incline. Right. But I'm and maybe it's a small detour. I love that song by Jordan Davis detours Mm -hmm. like but it's going to lead me back to the thing that I'm supposed to do. And for her, she was like at a very early time in her career said, I'm going to be multifaceted. Mm -hmm. You multifaceted. You have multiple businesses. You're like you were an athlete. We can be more than just one thing and you can be good at more than just one thing. And I think that being dynamic and having the ability to, you know, be strong in many different areas just makes you a better human, more empathetic human, and you're able to relate to more people and then Mm -hmm. in turn help more people. So experiencing across the board is never a bad thing. 100%. Um, So yeah, I feel like, you know, as we keep talking about her and her journey, she definitely like some of the hardest times in her life created some of the most success in her life. Yeah. And you have down here forged in fire. Good. Yeah. Forged in fire. So yeah. I am big on this. This is something that I'm just realizing more and more about myself that like I always become like the strongest. Like I come out. Oh, Christian, I come out like a phoenix. Would you look at that? Christian started his business. It's Phoenix Media. And it's about like the phoenix come yeah out no phoenix. i was so Do low. yeah no 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 so my brain is doing weird things lately so i have weird connections so i apologize to our listeners because i'm all over the place but it's like a little memory hook yeah so um forged in the fire like and this is just for you guys like the best stones are forged in fire mm-hmm. so if you're going through it right now and you know not getting recognized the way that you want to in your business or in your job or anything like that maybe you're not getting the promotion you thought that you deserved you're getting turned down or rejected, not being paid what you believe you deserve or working tirelessly, all of those things. Like, I mean, in Britain, I can look at each other right now and say, we've been working tirelessly. Mm -hmm. But like, I know that I know definitely without a doubt in my mind that Britain's going to come out the other end. Like one, I'm really proud of her. And I think she'll be super stoked on what she's created once she gets a minute Mm -hmm. to like settle into all of the things that she did. But, you know, every moment is passing. So how are you going to spend that passing moment? Are you going to let it turn you into ash or will you let it turn you into a precious, precious and rare stone? Exactly. It's like the hard times you, by not quitting and Mm -hmm. by still waking up and showing up, you not only prove to other people, but more importantly, you prove to yourself that you are capable of getting through the hard times and that you are capable of, producing success, whatever that may be to you. It might look different to someone else Mm -hmm. than it does to you, but you are able to achieve the success no matter what life throws at you. Mm -hmm. And while sometimes it might knock you back down on your ass, like Mm -hmm. just believing in yourself and betting on yourself. Yeah. And I feel this so hardcore right now in my life because I have a lot of things up in the air and I don't know what my life is going to look like and things are definitely changing, but I do know that I can bet on myself and I can count on myself and that I will get through whatever. And it might not look like what people expect it to look like in the end. And that's, that's okay. It might not even look like how you expected it. Oh, 100. I have no idea what to expect at this point. So, and like you, like we were talking about today, like you, you know, suffering losses and you going through really hard times, sometimes we don't have the luxury to stop and feel things because we have to continue to push our businesses forward because at the end of the day, we're the only ones that are going to do that. Right. And sometimes whether if you're a listener and you're a mom and you've had a horrible day, you don't have the luxury to stop and stop being a mom. You so just waking up and doing the best that you can that day. And I think I learned that from my dad, like even so just to like, give some light on what Britain just said, like my uh, dad's mother passed last night. So on Sunday night, and then, um, you know, I learned this morning that that had happened and Britain was like, are you okay? Like, are, why are you not? She's like, you're doing the thing where you shove it off. And that as my friend is really important. I need her to say those things to me because I do have a tendency to shove it off. 
the difference between this time and the last time she said that to me was that this time I was just like, I do not have the luxury right now to break down the way that I did with my papa and grandma, because I just don't after the breakup, papa and grandma. And now this, like I'm building a business. I do not have a moment right now to stop and be wildly emotional. It doesn't mean that I won't handle it. I will talk about it in therapy, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to have to like, um, time block it. Like it sounds fucked up, but like I am, I'm going to have to set it aside until I can handle it because right now I have a business that needs me Mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't sit with that right now. And again, like I look at the last year of my life and I mean, really, truly like hard. Yeah. (laughs) But so you've had to persist through a lot of not only like business obstacles, but like emotional, personal obstacles. And those sometimes are the hardest ones because it's separate. Like your business is one area of your life and you have Mm -hmm. to maintain that professionalism and that expertise in the sales. Yeah. And then your personal life is still happening at the same time right alongside of it. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep one literally so steady while the other one's just like freaking so jagged. Well, and your personal life is always a fucking roller coaster, in my opinion. Like there is relationships are not easy. They're not the same. They're not consistent. They're not anything like, and if yours are fucking call me and let me know how you're doing. Yeah. But like, I mean, they're just not, and I'm bringing in new relationships, right? Like I'm trying to have, like, I'm trying to I'm not doing it well or at all really right now, but like I was trying to date at one point and like that was another thing you bring into the anyway, point being we're forged in fire, right? You the best stones are created um, by going through really hard things. And the only thing that's going to get you through that is persistence. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to bring us to our next topic? Yeah, I feel like we're going to wrap it up really quick. Well, then maybe let's touch on this perceived failure situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to talk about saying above it. Okay. What you want to do that one and I'll do perceived failure. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So like we were talking about how Jennifer Lopez doesn't feed the fire of things that are negative. She just always rises above, you know, the negativity and the things that people say. Yeah. That's something that I think we all need to do. And we all need to like, you know, fuel the positive things in our lives and, feel what is working and pay attention to the things that are going to push us forward instead of the things that are going to hold us back. Um, But I also wanted to just touch on one thing. She said that like when she's creating or preparing for like a big show or something, she feels like an artist. And like, she was like, I don't know what the end, like she knows what the end is supposed to look like, but she says it's like such a messy route to get there. Mm -hmm. Like she's doing a painting and there's like paint under her nails and all over her clothes and then the end is like this beautiful masterpiece it's like sometimes the journey is just really messy and it does it's definitely not a straight line Mm -hmm. but the end is a beautiful masterpiece so that's something that we just need to keep in mind and um knowing that it's normal Mm -hmm. that you do have to like the hate and the obstacles and the drawbacks and the kick like it's all normal but the end will be all worth it if you continue to persist absolutely and i think as you go through all of that is like what's your why like you know what's your goal and what's your why and i think that that was such a great parallel that you just drew to that part is like you know why is she doing what she's doing mm-hmm. the super bowl stopped being about her like she was like all right if you're not gonna let me have If you're not going to treat me fair or equally, fuck you. I'll do what I can and I'm going to make it the best that I can. I think that's one of the best Super Bowl performances I've ever watched. Mm -hmm. Far better than the shark situation with Katy Perry. Not to be, I don't even remember who opened for her, but that was such an odd situation. Right. But like, it was such a masterpiece. And so for her, her why in that was like, I need to tell the story of my community and where I came from and the people that I back. And like there, I have... And she says this, you know, I'm not a politician, but like I have a responsibility to speak on this. Yeah. And I'm not going to hit anybody over the head with it. But like, it's important that I stand up for what I believe in. And that is the key right there. Right. Is stand up for the things that you believe in. Know who you are. What are the things that are are important to you? And if people are listening, share those things. Mm -hmm. What do you want to share? Yep. And yeah, just staying true to your values and what makes you you. Mm -hmm. Um. And not straying from that, which is hard to do. It helps you keep going, though, mm-hmm. when all the nights are long and sleepless. It's and like a day's are long. Right. Yeah. Exactly. 
So perceived failure. We talked about this at the top of the show. Like you, that was a big thing that I also learned. And keep in mind, I watched this on the way home from Dallas and not that Dallas was a failure, but it was just like a, a, it was a lot of learnings for me. And I had to lose, like let control go of things that I wasn't, I don't think ready to to let go of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And with her, so for example, that Donatella Versace dress she wears, the green one, Mm -hmm. famous. I don't know if you guys know this, but that is the whole reason that Google Images was created. Wow. And she got so much hate for that dress because she's basically wearing like a cloth. Yeah. And she got to put another woman's art on display. She was like, it's iconic. Mm -hmm. Like I, if I said the green dress that JLo wore, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Like you don't even need to look it up. Not only that, but one of the number one resources we use in America today and one of the number one companies in America, Google, literally created an entire like app off of her. Right. It's a, and it was such a huge deal at the time. And now we think about it as iconic. So sometimes when you're in it and it seems like this big negative ball of bad, it could actually in the long run, A, it's not going to matter as much because time has a way of making everything more minimal than it actually was in the moment. Mm -hmm. And also like great things come from that. Yeah. And I think you look at like maybe her not getting awarded for the Oscars and this, and we can leave it on this note too, is like, this was another huge thing I took away is like, people are not going to remember you. And she says this, people are not going to remember me for the awards that I won or Mm -hmm. the money that I made. They're going to remember me for like how how I made them feel that my music like got them through something hard that like my fans run up to me and they hug me and they say that I got them through. And I'll be dead honest with you right now. That song I'm real with her and Ja Rule like has gotten me through a lot. Jenny from the block that grounded me when I moved to Tahoe as a 12 year old who was like in a totally new, I went from having 1500 people in my class in a school in San Diego to having 1500 people in my whole town. Yeah. Like it was a hard move. Definitely. And she got me through all of that. And so I think, you know, what are you leaving behind? Because right. money, things, and awards don't matter. Right. And that's, I mean, we can't think of all of our favorite celebrities. We're not going to list the Academy Awards. We're not going to list the Grammys that they have. Instead, we're going to like remember exactly what you said, how they made us feel. Yeah. She has persisted through all the hate, all the slaps in the face, all the lack of nominations, all the yeah. lack of winning. Um, and instead she's, you know, this built this empire and has been this public figure that has maintained her dignity, who has maintained her values and has, who has stayed true to herself. Um, and so go watch this, mm-hmm. persist through the hard times, um, and you will definitely come out on top. Yeah, it was such an inspirational um, documentary. So definitely go watch it, you guys. If you haven't already, if you have, um, why don't y'all like let us know what you thought of it? Um, I, in fact, let's do, do you want to do a giveaway? Should we just do a giveaway to like be exciting and do a fun thing? Okay. If people, I will post for the show uh, the announcement of this release on Wednesday morning. And if you guys comment on it, what you thought of the documentary, we will pick one winner and I will give away a candle. Nice. I will give away something from BLFT. I totally just put her on the spot. Yeah. I just made that up. This is why it's hard to be my business partner. Candles don't have (laughs) sizes. Okay. Like it's a little bit harder for, we will give away an item from BLFT and it'll be a good one. Yes. So, um, sorry for putting you on the spot there. (laughs) But yeah, so go ahead, head to our Instagram, um, make a comment about what you thought of the documentary. We can't wait to hear what you guys think. And um, we'll chat at you soon. Thanks for thanks for coming on here. You guys know the drill. Um, Follow us Brit on blast on all of socials. Um, I'm this part I don't have memorized. That's okay. Nope. What do we we want them to review as well? Yeah, like like, subscribe. (laughs) Yep. Please do that. That helps our pod. High five, Britain. Let's get out of here. Please don't review this episode. Bye. Okay, bye.